welcome siblings to worship. We hope you are blessed by this service and feel connected to our faith community. Continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed is the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Trusting in mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your motives, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We use your good creation for our own benefit. We fear a difference and do not welcome others as we have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and duty. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us, so that we may live and serve you in the newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have the peace of God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil, for who can govern, govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this, 
And God said to him, Because you have asked this, and have not asked for yourself long life, or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding, to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Will you please rise for the gospel? sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds. But when it has grown, it has the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. Then he told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid, then in his joy goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Please join me in a word of prayer. Holy Spirit, plant the seeds of God's kingdom in us and the world so that justice, mercy, and grace may grow and bear the fruit and flavor of Jesus. O oh God, may the words from my lips and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our salvation. Amen. So many times when I preach on this text about the mustard seed, I always like to hand out mustard seeds to the kids to take home. But in the last church I was in, the farmers told me, don't be doing that. Mustard seeds create a big problem for us. It's not a good thing to have these things growing in our gardens because they create such a hassle. And so I have mustard seeds on the altar, but I'm not going to hand them out. Mustard shrub is great for the birds of the air, but farmers would tell you otherwise. But it is amazing that something so small can become so big and so huge. How do we let those seeds germinate in us so that we too can 
can do big things. And then in the parable, we hear the story of the woman who, with the yeast, she leavens out three things of flour. It's been interesting to see on Facebook how many people have been making homemade bread, making their own sourdough because yeast has been hard to find. That bread can grow and feed so many people. One of the things that's been happening with Pantry Pack is that we have an organization that brings bread, and they bring an abundance of bread. And so when people come, we say, take as much as you want. But they usually only take a couple breads and maybe one sweet. They are proud people that come. They don't want to overstate their welcome into our pantry pack. They're not greedy people. But they come to be nourished and to be fed. So what is the kingdom of heaven like? Is it something small and that hidden? That does work and create something new that is greater than we expected and beneficial to many? This past week I wrote in my staff pack track about um, John Lewis. I heard a report that a Cory Booker, you know, who was running for president, uh, said about John and that he asked John, so how have you survived through everything you have gone through? And he said, you just keep focused. You keep looking forward. You don't lose hope. He said, the one thing that I have treasured, that I have kept, is my joy. They can take whatever they want from me, but they will never take my joy. My joy for life, my joy for love, my joy is what is mine and cannot be taken away. And then I heard another quote from John Lewis. Do not get lost in the sea of despair. Be hopeful. Be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, a year. It is a struggle of a lifetime. Never be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. Getting into good trouble. I think that is breaking through in our world today. Getting into good trouble, but speaking up and creating ways for different voices to be heard that have been silent in the past. And yet it's easy to fall into despair when trouble comes, when protest happens in various places in our country, when we hear the COVID-19 cases are climbing around the world, the worries of people depending <coughs> on their unemployment benefits that will still soon come to an end. Good trouble comes when we see God expiring us in our actions. We can let ourselves be stuck in that despair or we can see how good trouble and God expire actions can move us forward. The poet Evo Wing writes, good trouble is powerful as a shorthand for the idea that disturbing the rules and pursuing the good, greater good is honorable and righteous. So how is the kingdom of heaven like good trouble? It's a powerful question for individuals, but it's also a powerful question for the church. This time as we see disruptive rules that have been working for us in the past, it's time for a new normal, a new way of life, we can't go back to the old ways. We must change and we must move forward. What greater good are we growing into? What seeds we can sow as we reinvent what it means to be church? What spreading network of care and habitation can we build even while our worship takes place for some at a distance? As a congregation, we're looking at just a few more weeks in this place. What will our next chapter be? Are you willing to cause good trouble? Or do you want to step away? When we did our discernment conversations and the survey for the transition team, one of the things that we saw loud and clear is that Salem is about 
our relationships, about our church family. We are about doing outreach through Pantry Pack and the Gathering Table. We are about welcoming people, LGBTQ plus folks, siblings. <coughs> so when we nurture our life together, as we step into a new chapter of our journey, we have to take the seeds with us, even if they may be mustard seeds that grow in ways that challenge us. Are we willing to be like the woman to leaven our lives so that we can rise up? Are we willing to have good trouble come our way or do we just want to give up and step away? I call on you, members of Salem Lutheran Church, to speak up, to say something, seek the good trouble that brings us together to our God in our midst. Our situation may be changing, but God changes not. You walk with good courage. Lost my last page. Our leadership plants the seeds. Our actions incorporate the needed of leaven. Our collective care helps the movement alive. It's good trouble and necessary trouble. And I hope it is an expression of the kingdom of heaven breaking in. So keep up the faith. Be well, be safe, be hope. And most importantly, let no one take away your joy. In the name of the God who has created us, redeemed us, and sustains us. Amen. You please stand and sing with us.
church, let us confess our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in the Spirit, and he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. us in common things, a mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for us according to your will. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick, especially Suzanne, Jerry, Harlan, and Colleen. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In you, our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day, gather us with all your saints in light, especially Charlene. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The offering prayer. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in our world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that all that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection. Open to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, 
saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father,
Empower us to go forth, sustained by these gifts, so that we may share your neighborly love with all, through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. And receive this benediction. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. God, the Creator, Jesus the Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. <laughs>